Top Tip Tuesday time again. It's Bob Wormsley here from Insidium. Hello. And today we're jumping into mesh tools and I'm going to show you how you can make this really cool, quick procedural lightning rig using mesh tools spline effects. So let's jump into cinema and we'll start that clock. Here's our scene then, and we've got two emitters set up here. Blue particles, which are coming out of this sphere, and we've got orange particles, which are coming out of this small silver plane. We've got them set up in pulse mode, and we're sticking these particles to their source object. So we're going to join these using spline effects to make our electricity. Let's go to Insidium, Mesh Tools, Spline Effects, and we're going to put it down into our Utilities folder. So the Object tab of Spline Effects, it requires a start and an end object to create the connection splines. So let's drag in our emitter start into the start and emitter end into the end and the connection type we'll set to points. And now you'll see that for every start particle, it will connect to its nearest orange particle with these wiggly lines. Let's mesh these straight away for our electricity. So we'll go to generators and we'll bring in an XP spline mesher. We'll switch off joins, switch off vertex colors, and in the bottom of these settings, we need to drag in our spline here. So let's drag in our spline effects, and we'll come up, and we'll make the size maybe one centimeter, and let's, with this scaling spline, let's just bring it down so it has a point at the tip, we can make our spline effects invisible now, and we have this geometry. Let's put a material on. So in the material manager, we've got this emission. Drag that onto our spline mesher. Okay, and now we have this. So we can adjust the animation of these by going to our mesh tools, spline effects, object. And if we come down, we've got a motion tab and we've got large and small noise, which is deforming and animating our splines. So in the large noise, let's put the amplitude up to 150, maybe scale, big scale of 500, uh, fast animation speed, 350, and now that's gonna give us quite a frenetic um, lightning. Cool. Now we're gonna create some forks. So let's go to spline effects, connections. And we're gonna add a fork layer. Let's click on this. Now the fork layer, let's select it by default it's set to a fork count of two what it's doing it's distributing two forks on every original spline and it can be look this one's been born right at the base of that original spline this one here has been born right at the tip we want to avoid having them at the base and the tip and have them in the middle of the spline so to do that we need to adjust the distribution curve here it is. So this is saying they're equally distributed across the length of the original spline, but we don't want that. So this is the base, this is the tip. So in the middle, we want full distribution, but then at the base, we don't want them distributed there. And if you have a look at this fork here, as I move that, you see I'm moving it away from the base, and we could do the same for the tip and move them away from the tip of the spline. Perfect. So now what we want to do is, that's fine, but we actually want to connect these to the remaining orange particles. Well, we can do that in the spline effects. Look, we've got connections, but the only problem is that they have to be connected to geometry. We can't do this to particles. So what we need to do is create some quick geometry from our emitter end particles. We'll do that with a generators. So let's go to the generators folder and we're gonna just do it with a sprite object, XP sprite. The XP sprite is saying, which emitter do you want to use? So we'll drag in the emitter end. Uh, cube is fine, so now if we hit play, we're generating these cubes from those orange particles and we will be able to use this. All we've got to do is put it in a join object to join them all together. So let's go to utilities, get an XP join. I'll put this join up in our generators. We'll make the sprite a child of the join. And now in our mesh tool spline effects, in our fork layer, we can connect the forks to our join object. We just need to put it on custom object, drag in the join. Let's make the join invisible. Let's make all of our particles invisible. And now we should have what we want. Yes, great. So let's make that plane end invisible as well. And now we've got this forking happening. That's looking really good. Now we can get more forks if we go to our spline effects our fork layer, hold control, drag and drop a copy, 
and make this new one a child of our original forks and then we've got kind of subsequent forks coming off those original ones and yeah loads more detail look at that that's great now we're almost out of time but i've got to show you how we can make some spawned spark particles so to do that we're going to spawn particles from our orange ones so let's go to modifiers generate modifiers and bring in an xp spawn we don't want our blue start particles to spawn so let's go into that emitter modifiers tab drag in the xp spawn so it's discluded okay cool let's go to our spawn settings we need a spawning emitter so let's add an emitter here's our new spawning emitter let's go to the emission tab we don't want these to have a full lifespan they need to be a short-lived uh, particle so maybe 10 frames lifespan with five variation we want a decent amount of speed maybe 200 speed with 150 variation then in the display we want these to look like sparks so we'll make them lines we'll reduce the size factor so they're quite thin lines and we'll make them an orange color now let's go to our spawn settings which will dictate we can leave everything in default because they're going to randomly fire out in a spherical direction which is what we want but we don't need 300 per frame let's put just maybe 60 with a 20 variation and now let's have a look we should be getting some spawn particles yes that looks cool so we just need some physics let's put a gravity in the scene so we'll go to modifiers motion modifiers gravity let's reduce that strength We'll switch off visible in editor let's get rid of this red square that's the spawning emitter display we'll switch off draw emitter and now we have got sparks with gravity physics for every point and we can take our sphere we can move this around and we can get our lightning coming from wherever we want and that is a really cool and quick to set up lightning rig